Hey, I'm Jay from Team 125 Overland, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about vehicle selection. Uh, one thing I want to talk about is why I pick the vehicles that I actually pick to build. Uh, you know, obviously, like, the whole part of overlanding is the fact that we use our vehicles. You know, that's kind of like the foundation of adventure. So, we'll talk a little bit about my first pick, which is my Silverado. Um, I've been like a Chevy guy for years. I've always had Chevys. I've owned a couple different ones like Fords. Um, I never really was impressed by Fords. Uh, but when I was 22, I bought my first real Chevy truck, which is a 94 Z71 short box standard cab in black. Loved it. Drove it uh, 230,000 miles. Um, super reliable. Never left me stranded. Uh, you know, the maintenance was great. You could fix the thing with like a monkey wrench. It was just fantastic. Uh, parts are cheap. You know, if the transmission went, it was 600 bucks to throw a transmission in and out. Uh, it's great. But as you know, if you're familiar with vehicles, those older Chevrolets were IFS, which they still are, but they were also torsion bar suspension. Not a great suspension setup. Um, not a great suspension, expensive to lift, and the IFS is weak. Additionally, too, with those with your engines, they don't produce a lot of horsepower, so you're not looking at a really super high performance. But they're still great vehicles. I mean, uh, they seem to hold up against rust. Uh, you know, fantastic. So it's just like a natural selection, natural, natural for me to go with another Chevy after I bought that one. I bought my my first new vehicle was my 2011 Silverado, which I bought. Um, once I bought that truck, I retired my 1994 with the intention of actually doing a solid axle swap. Um, I had a Dana 60 for the front, I had a corporate 14 for the back, and I was going to swap with the engine with a, a Vortec 454, which I had with a donor truck. So it was going to be kind of like a really big off-road truck. When I was a kid, I always had this idea of overlanding. And it was funny because I never even knew what the name of what I wanted to do was. And so I became an older adult and said, well, this is actually overlanding. So, um, you know, I had all these ideas for this truck. Well, I tore apart the 94 and I was getting ready for some stuff and just life happened and the project kind of went by the wayside. One day, I needed new tires on my Silverado, the 2011. And I decided that, hey, let's, let's just upgrade it with 33s. Let's throw a rough country lift on it. I think altogether the whole entire cost of everything was, I was cheap. Like lift, rough country lifts are like 400 bucks. And I put a Hercules um, mud tires. They're great tires too. They don't last for long, but good tires. Um, and I loved it. The lift looked great. And I remember that I got uh, a tax return a couple months later. I said, well, maybe I'll throw a stereo in here too because I want a GPS. And that was my Pioneer. Loved it. And I said, since I'm doing this, maybe I'll just put, uh, I've always wanted a pre-runner bar on the front. And, you know, like, uh, maybe I should put a light on it and put lights in the rear. So we modified it. And we spent a couple weeks doing the stuff. It was really fun. I really enjoyed it. That summer I went camping. And I used to be diehard camping, camping in a tent. And, uh, you know, very much a little bit like um, over the top, and just it was miserable. Like I remember, like that was the the that was the one time I went camping, where it was just it almost soured me from outdoors. It just we had such a bad time, and I remember getting back telling my best friend, "This is the last time I'm ever gonna go camping. I'm like I'm done. Like we gotta figure out something new." And I went home and I remember sitting down and thinking about, you know, I've been camping for. 20 years and I want to do something different and that's I remember I said well what if I just slept in the back of my truck and from that moment that was like the real idea of overlanding where I really got hooked and I remember I spent that turned into like well maybe I can um put a shower in there you know something crazy I always thought about that as a kid installing a shower in a car and originally like I thought well, maybe if I like took, like I mean, originally when I was a lot younger, I thought about building a Jeep and, and taking the bumper and having the bumper sealed and have the bumper hold water, like somehow have the exhaust heat the water. Um, so I've always had these ideas rolling around, 
but it didn't kind of solidify until after that trip. You know, here it was like 37 or 38, whatever. So that was really kind of the thing. And the th first thing was I never thought gave a lot of thought to vehicle selection. I never said, is this the right vehicle for it? Not that it would really matter at this point because you, you pick what you got. Um, so what are the upsides and the downsides of a full size? Well, first off, um, let's talk a little bit about my truck, right? It's a short box standard cab. Uh, so let's compare it to specs. If you take a full size Chevy like mine, compare it to an extended cab Tacoma, you're really only gonna have about a three inch difference in length, believe it or not. Right? Just three inches, that's it. It's not a huge difference in length. Width is about five inches of a difference. And weight is about 400 pounds, 200 to 400 pounds. Now, if you figure horsepower to weight ratio, uh, Tacoma's maybe what, 280 off him? I don't know, I don't know Tacoma. But I do know that mine was three, I think 40 from the factory. Given that it's got a intake, and it's got a Bully GT tuner, it's got a, it's got a Flowmaster exhaust, um, it's probably a little bit more. Let's say 360, 365, almost something like that. But there's a noticeable difference in power. Um, Trail-wise, I've taken mine off road plenty of times. Don't really see a huge difference between the two. I mean, smaller vehicles, of course, are going to be nimble, but you know, mine makes up for the power. Um, you know, when you compare full size to this, I think where the real weakness is, is that there's a couple. I think the first weakness is the IFS systems in those like um, quarter tons. You just, they're not, they don't really have support. You know, like if you want to do a lock in the front, you're not going to be able to find them. Um, they're smaller axles. They're just really smaller. And smaller IFS systems are great in smaller vehicles. They work really like, they're not really that reliable or you're, you're scared about breaking them in the bigger size vehicles. So you want to push the actual, uh, you don't want to push it. Additionally too with the lifts, if you don't get the right proper lift, the actual angle of the CV shaft will cock down. And that is really going to actually be a weak point that's going to break the CV shaft. That's part of the reason why when you go with more of the expensive lifts like BDS, they keep the geometry like that so it's kind of straight. So it's going to be more expensive there too. Um, I don't think there's a lot of overland support for full-size trucks. I think like the only one on the market is going to be Dodge with AEV, and I don't think like there's a lot. I just don't. I don't think. I think everything is. I think every, the things I use on my truck were generic. Like the NFAB can be used on anything. Um, the lights can be used on anything. The rack was just a generic rack that I got at that length. The tire gate, same thing. So it's much of it is. It, works but it's generic it's not like hey we built this for full-size trucks in overlanding so there's no overlanding real support as opposed to like when you get into like toyota there's a ton of stuff like you can get drawer systems already pre-made uh, additionally too like when you look at the comparison my truck if you want to buy a bumper for the front you're looking at anywhere between like 15 to 2,000 dollars for a front bumper if it looks cool, if it like actually looks good and it's effective. It doesn't look like a doesn't look like Jay Leno's chin from the side. I mean, that's what they look like. But if you look at my Forerunner, um, you know, like it's a CBI bumper, it's 1,500. It's a beautiful bumper for that. So there are a lot of advantages to a, a full size. You have that power. Um, you know, GM built a great truck. It's a fantastic truck. But, you know, like, I, just, I don't think there's a lot of support. So that influenced my next vehicle purchase, which was my 4Runner. Um, I really, I thought, okay, well, what are we going to do? Are we going to go with a Jeep? Are we going to go 4Runner? And for years, actually, not for years, since I was a kid, I've always wanted a Jeep. But you know the thing about the Jeep is, is that, like, when you're in the area that I'm in, which is Michigan, you know, Detroit, everyone has one. And when I went to Vegas um, a year and a half ago, two years, whatever, year and a year and a half ago, when I went to Vegas and I traveled all over, I realized that, like, you know, you might see one forerunner a day here in traffic. You'll see, like, a Jeep every 30 seconds. Everyone has lifted Jeeps here, probably mostly because, too, like, the actual Jeep factory is like right down the road. But like, everyone has Jeeps and there's nothing unique about them. 
they're always lipped the same way. They always have the same front bumpers. They always have big huge high checks. And I, I think Jeeps are great. Jeeps are fantastic. But Jeeps also, especially in this area, first they rot, okay? Um, I don't know about the JKs. I mean, I, don't, I really haven't seen them, but they're not that old. But like, you know, definitely the YJs um, and the TJs, those things are just rotted. They're just absolutely rot. And then like, um, additionally too, like for, from a driving standpoint, they're horrible on gas mileage. They are uncomfortable sitting. Like I remember driving my, my, my best friend's 2000, I think it was 2010. And I'm just, you couldn't even get your elbow on anything. It's just really uncomfortable. And that can really influence my thing. Now I look at the 2018s and I say, wow, you know, it's really cool features. The fact that like the dash is waterproof and like, um, a lot of the little like nuances, especially with like the instant instrument cluster, um, the top's really cool. But still, it's you know it's a forty-four thousand dollar vehicle that doesn't have a lot of amenities to it. Um, they have to pay a lot of extra. You know, I mean, I, I still remember when you have to pay extra for air conditioning. You know, so that's kind of like the part of the G. Um, so I really was balancing that with a Forerunner and a G. So. The Forerunner is, like I said, it's the same exact cost as you're going to get for like a, a loaded Rubicon. So both are four doors, comparable, they're 10 horsepower with each other. I think the Jeep has 10 horsepower on it. Um, you know, and that's kind of like, and weight, they're about the same. Rear cargo space is higher in the Forerunner. Uh, so what else, what are the other factors? Well, honestly, it's, it's realistically speaking, when you look at a Forerunner, it's just more comfortable to drive every day. I mean, it's a car. It's a it's an SUV. It's not like a Jeep is a great off road vehicle, and but we spend minutia. I mean, like honestly, like maybe one percent of the actual vehicle's life off road. We're spending ninety nine on the road. That's great that we have something that's capable, but I still have to drive back and forth to work. That's where the Forerunner really ultimately sold me. It's a great vehicle, and if you have a TRD Pro. With even the stock suspension, um, I do believe mine has KDSS. It just drives great. You know, it's just a fantastic ride. I just you don't feel anything. Um, addition to it is it is it has this level of luxury. Okay, it's got leather seats. It's got you know I mean it's got heated leather seats. It's got like leather trim. Um, I know that I've complained about like things like features of my like format that I would change. But overall, I think it just wins out. In addition to when you look at the overall build, here's some things to consider. Okay, first off, um, it may be lacking things, but when you pop the hood, there is a ton of space to install a ton of stuff. So like, let's say if you have additional boxes you want to mount the firewall, there's a ton of space. Uh, if you want to install a second battery, super easy. All these things are very, very, very much available underneath the hood, and I can't say the same thing for a Jeep. There's a lot of stuff that's available for a Jeep, but you know, these are stuff that like, it's really honest, there's so much room. Uh, additionally too, one of the things is it has a removable center section from the rear axle, which, I mean, down the road, if you have a problem, that's great to work on. Our downside is it has an IFS in the front, but that IFS is supported by an ARV locker. Um, so you can really easily add a compressor. Um, you know, overall, it's just, just a better deal. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of like the whole entire vehicle selection I've had why I picked what I picked. I mean, ultimately, I mean, you know, I mean, my Silverado was just a truck that I own that I converted. And if I, the question is, is, if I had to do it again, would I? As opposed to like, let's say a Jeep. And I think that I would still do the Silverado. Um, as far as the sleep hookup, I mean, the fact of it is, is that, you know, my bed is still a queen size bed in the back. That makes a world of difference for comfort. And also too, rooftop tents are really cool, but my bed in the back, oh, while it's a little bit cramped, it's super warm, it's really comfortable. Uh, you know, it can fit me, my girlfriend, my three dogs. You know, so it's not like, and additionally too, I can put my, my kid in the front, in the front seat. So there is just a ton of room. And I just think it's a better setup. It's not great for bringing lots of people but if you have only three people going I think it's absolutely fantastic and it's more than enough um, 
You know, I just like the setup. I think the only downside is that, especially with mine, is that you, know, you have to take the fridge out so you actually see from the bed. Otherwise than that, I think it's, I don't know, man, I don't think I'd change anything. I don't think I do what I'd want to do because of the rooftop tents. Or, um, yeah, I just, I get a little, like, a little bit leery about that because I know I've taken my truck in as low as zero degree weather and camped, and I still camped in the back of the truck very comfortably without heat. You know, it just, it locks it all in. You know, that I got an electric blanket for the back. It's just, it's great. I don't know if I would do that with a rooftop tent and wonder how exactly, how cold that would be. You know, it's supposed to be comfortable. It's not supposed to be miserable. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just all things to consider. And I just, I know that like in Overland, when you look at the community, we, 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 and I, of course, I'm the same way. I mean, we just get so focused, like, everyone's got to have, like, a Toyota. You know what I'm saying? Or everyone's got to have a Jeep or Toyota, Jeep or Toyota. And I get it. I get it. I get it. I get, it. I get, it. I get it. the great platforms. <laughs> but it's not your only option. You know, I just think that there can be creativity. And I think that we get so pigeonholed with well, the only two vehicles that we pick are, I can only get it. Tacoma, I can only get a Jeep, I can only get a forward. When we get in that, we don't build on any creativity. We don't see the advantages from other vehicles. We don't expand upon the idea. I wouldn't have built the things that I did if it wasn't for doing it with a truck. You know, so I just don't think it's just available. And I remember like one time, like, uh, you know, I've, I've got a fairly amount of videos or views on my um, Silverado video, and somebody says, oh, that'll never make it down to McKenzie, which, if you think about it, like, somebody, they probably never even seen the McKenzie. I know I haven't. I never even thought about it. But, I mean, who knows? I mean, my truck has just as good of a chance of making it down any trail. I don't think, I don't think five inches of width, three inches of length, and 400 pounds is going to, you know, like, say, like, well, you can't go, you can't go down this trail, because... It just doesn't work. So, I mean, just kind of consider when you're thinking about whatever vehicle to actually um, build. I mean, hey, you might even be bold enough to build a van or um, you know, something even smaller, like a tracker. Uh, I just think that I say, please, by all means, pick something and let your mind do the actual exploring of the vehicle. Say, well, how can I turn this and be creative, turn this into an overland vehicle and not just be. Once again, just another person saying, oh, I automatically need a Forerunner or automatically need... Go with Tahoe. Go with the Blazer. You know, just try something different. So, um, yeah, I hope that helps. A little story. So, all right, thanks.